Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to tackle the infantry fighting vehicle from Anvil Industry. This is from the Digital Forge. It is a 3D print which I have managed to make at home and what a monster it is. It's been a real joy sticking this thing together and having a bit of a play around, doing something really unusual. Now in this video I am doing things a little back to front. Um, I am trying a few new things and just experimenting essentially on camera. So at a couple of points it might seem like I've lost my nerve, but I do urge you keep the faith and watch all the way through for how we're going to get to this result. As always, all of our paints will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. So before I prime this thing, I really want to show you what the kit actually looks like before you get to any of the painting. Now, full disclosure, I was working with a pre-release version and doing some test prints for the team, so there are one or two little errors on this vehicle which aren't going to be present on yours when you print your own, so don't worry about that. This hatch, for example, just don't look. Don't look at that. Now, as well as this arrangement that I've printed with the... Uh, I'm just going to call it the duck, the D-U-K-W, or duck, <laughs> uh, the duck front, you know, there is also this uh, sort of MRAP looking thing, uh, a truck front, which would slot in there instead, uh, and you can see there the gap where the little hull turret fits in there. Now, if you are cleverer and more patient than I am, this little pin here, which allows this to pivot, uh, I accidentally glued mine in place, but you, I trust, will be able to figure that one out. Now as well, let's pop the turret off for a second, because this whole uh, armoured top section where the turret sits, this part comes away, and there's also these uh, flat, the canvas tops, and there's also this hatch top, which is really neat, and obviously that opens. I'm going to just throw those aside for a second. Now, why I point out that everything opens is that the interior of this thing is also fully detailed. So, even, you're not going to see it in that angle, but there's chairs and everything in there too. And again, if you were a smarter person than I, you wouldn't glue the rear hatch shut, which is designed to swing open. So, if you want to do the interior, you can do that too. And it's a beautiful kit, really very impressive. Let's flip this upside down. And you can see, like I've not bothered cleaning off some of these support struts, but how this all fits together. It's a really cool kit. Uh, it really shares more in common with a plastic kit than a resin print, so I'm very impressed with it. So let's go ahead. I'm going to take this downstairs, and at the moment, you've already seen the finished product. I don't know what color I'm going to prime it. I haven't decided yet how I want to paint this thing. So when I come back with a color on this, it's going to be a total surprise to me. Okay then, bright white. <laughs> I have an idea, and I really hope this is going to work. Now, white primer can be a little finicky about how it's handled, so I've let that dry, that was about 30 minutes, and I am going to wear a glove while I'm working with the white stuff. Now what I have off to the side here is ordinary uh, masking tape. This is available at any hardware store. What I'm going to do is just to start blocking out some fairly random shapes. Uh, now I'm not terribly worried, you'll hear that clattering away on the plastic there, I'm not worried if uh, I don't get a perfect bond against the, um, what's the word, the hull itself, because I'm going to use that to sort of get a, a slightly feathered edge. We'll touch up on that later. But for now, I'm going to mask uh, a camo pattern, the stuff that I want to stay white. So away we go. Let's uh, see what I end up with here. Now that might look slightly mad, but this is going to form the basis of our camo pattern. Now you'll see I've also torn off some smaller strips just to make um, little areas where I'm going to sort of paint around those later. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a couple of moments here. So I'm going to go take this downstairs again, and I am going to hit it with a different color primer over the top of this and see what we get. Now the vehicles had a second primer of Wolf Grey from the Army Painter, which is a nice sort of blue-grey finish, and I don't mind admitting to you I'm actually rather nervous about how this is going to look, because I've genuinely never done masking tape like this before. So, as ever, we're experimenting live on camera. Let's start uh, peeling these away. Ooh, 
Ooh, that's very bright. Oh, I might have accidentally been a genius. Yeah, let's start taking off this uh, masking tape. Get under there and find the edge of it. Yeah, here we go, here we go, here we go. Watch this one. This is going to be the satisfying one. Ah, oh, yes. Brilliant. Okay. <laughs> Let's take the rest of that off. Now get a load of that. How well did that turn out? I'm actually really pleased. I was not expecting a result like that. Let's just spin this around and, oh, brilliant. That's going to give us an absolutely perfect base to work from. Okay, now you'll see some areas where there is a slightly rough edge. And what I'm going to do is actually go to black and add a third camo color to what we're doing here. Uh, I've mixed in just a little bit of water to my paint, as you might expect. And I'm going to find just a few edges. Actually, that's probably an easier way of doing that. Where I'm going to paint a little bit of black into... Oh goodness, I might have the wrong brush for this. <laughs> but just a little bit of black into the edges of these areas. Now all of that time saved by using the uh, the masking tape was then shot to pieces by hand painting these uh, black markings on. So one that you might want to avoid yourself or maybe have a play around with how you apply the markings there. It also looks funny from the wrong angle. You know, some of these things, if I look at this uh, triangle here, from the right angle it looks fine, but you turn it slightly and it starts looking blobby and weird. But I suppose that's how these things would have looked. I've got here some Agrax shade and a big old brush. Oh, this is going to look awful going on. So, whoo, 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 whoo. just make sure that you are moving it around fairly quickly and jamming it into any recesses. Try not to let it pull on any flat areas if you can avoid that. But let's go nuts with this over the whole thing. Now, if you see this and go, Ugh. It is a good sign that you are human and you have eyes, because that is way grimier than we'd like it to be. But we're going to touch that up now and get that cool sort of dinged around effect. What I've got is a little bit of uh, foam from a blister pack. This is a good reason to still be buying metal miniatures, by the way. And I've got that in a pair of tweezers. What I'm going to do is I have over here some off-white. This is a Vallejo color. You could use a pure white if you wanted. And you just want a little bit of that in your knot brush. Then we're going to stipple that over our white areas. And you'll see very quickly, we build up that color, but we don't end up going into our recesses where we want that shading to remain intact. So you'll need to push down a little harder to get into the, uh, the middle sections of these, what would you call that? The floaty boaty bits. But we're going to go around now and make the white white again. So this will take a little bit of time, but as you can see from here, it's going to be totally worth it. Now that's just one panel. We're going to do all of the white like that. Now obviously, don't pay any attention to the bright blue gun here, but this gives us a pretty good idea of what we're going to have. It was only now that I realized I probably could have saved some time by not being quite as fussy with the black squares. We're going to go back and touch those up later anyway. But we're going to move on now and do exactly the same thing again with Wolf Grey. Now, when you come near any areas of white, you want to slow down and leave a little bit of that blurred uh, blue, sort of shaded blue effect underneath. Uh, but the black, we're not terribly worried about if we cover over that with some of this now. Now, I was thinking of going back and touching up the black, but I actually kind of like the slightly overrun uh, so it looks like the black was painted on last, and it has been worn and chipped at the edges as well. A slightly fuzzy appearance, eh, I think it looks pretty cool. I'm going to dry brush the blue and the black together with some long beard grey. I'm not really going to try and highlight the edges of the white though. So just a little bit of long beard grey on the edge of one of my makeup brushes. So I get a nice soft edge. And just going around like that, I am going to sharpen up some of the edges of the blue areas and the black stuff. Now that's probably not the quickest way of doing things, but I actually quite like the result. And it was oddly therapeutic just stippling on those colors. Again, we'll pop the tar aside, and now we're going to move on to metallic details. 
Now there's no really right answer for this. I'm gonna use lead belcher and then shade it a little later. So these bits like here, the uh, I guess exhausts on the back, a little bit of lead belcher, uh, weapon mounts and such like that. Let's go nuts now. Now we're gonna fill in some of the other black details, but I don't mean the camo pattern. What I mean is areas like the wheels and some of the mountings on the weapons, which are gonna be black. Now, instead of black, personally, I'm gonna use German gray. This is a Vallejo color, and it dries very close to black, but not quite. So it's great for tires and stuff like that. Uh, when it comes to the uh, weapon mountings and such, once we shade those, they're gonna look much darker too. Now you'll see in particular on the wheels how that dries almost black. I'm not gonna bother shading the wheels, but I am gonna shade all of the metal and the sort of painted black areas. And I'm gonna use a little bit of non oil just to do that. Now, while those are drying, it's time to give some thought to the lenses because there's quite a few of these. Uh, up on the turret hatch here, for example, and uh, on the turret itself as well, of course, I've got a little bit of corn red and I'm gonna just paint in these uh, prisms, I've heard them called as well. But anywhere that there are these little vision areas, this is a neat spot to get a little bit of extra warmth onto the miniature, because we've used quite a bit of you know, blue and white and all that, so it's quite cold. Let's add a little bit of red here. Now, once all of those are red, I've got a little bit of Troll Slayer orange. Now, obviously, in reality, the internal color of the uh, the fighting compartment wouldn't glow through the lenses like this, but who said this was reality? <laughs> so I'm gonna put just a little bit up into these corners here, like so. And then finally, just a tiny dot. We'll go back to off-white for one corner, two corners like so. Now here's where on a normal tank I'd start applying like chipping effects, but I think because of the way I've done the camo itself, that would kind of get lost. What I'm going to do instead is a little bit of rust. So I've taken here Cavalry Brown, this is a Vallejo color, and watered it down until it is basically a shade. And you'll see it runs very neatly into recesses, and it'll look quite red going on. But as this dries, that might be a little bit much there actually. As this dries, you're gonna get a neat uh, patchy rust effect. And anywhere that you get too much of it on, as you just see, just add a little bit of water, splatter it around some, <laughs> you can't get this wrong. So pick a few areas where you reckon it's gonna look as though the um, rust would have settled, you know, any collected water or what have you on something like this. And yeah, just add as much of this or as little as you like. Now we're almost finished, but I do want to do a little bit of dust and grime around the base of the vehicle. So I'm going to tear it off once again, and I have here some brown sand from Vallejo, and one of my big old makeup brushes. What I'm going to do is work this into the bristles, and then quite haphazardly, I'm just going to start stippily dry brushing. <laughs> not quite dry brushing, not quite stippling, I'm just flicking this along sort of the bottom half of the vehicle. And you'll see we very quickly pick up that slight bit of dust and dinge. So what I'm gonna do is go around the entire sort of bottom half. And when it comes to the front here, I'm gonna spend a little more time and add a bit more in here. And now without rinsing my brush out, I've added just a little bit of dark sand. And we're gonna do the same thing again, very lightly flicking at the edges. And you see we get a nice dusty look. Perfect. Now once I've finished this, what I'm gonna do is take it outside and I'm gonna give it a matte varnish. But once that matte varnish is settled, I'm gonna go back and hit the, um, oh, what do you call them? The prisms, <laughs> the lenses with a little bit of gloss varnish. So with all of those steps finished, let's come back in a couple of seconds and see what that looks like. And there at last, it's finished. Those two varnishes have dried and all of those last little details are really set off. Uh, one last thing I did do was actually to hit the turret weapon with a little bit of Necron compound, but I figured you guys know how to dry brush by now, surely. <laughs>
Now this was, as you probably saw, a bit of a challenge. Um, a couple of unexpected hiccups along the way, which were largely self-inflicted, but this is why you don't ordinarily experiment live on camera, right? But I had a good time. And while it wasn't something I would ordinarily do, I really did enjoy painting this absolute monstrosity. So as mentioned earlier, this is available through the Anvil Industry Digital Forge. You can sign up for $9 a month and you get stuff like this every month in your inbox for you to download and print at home. It's brilliant. This is the biggest thing I think they've done yet and what a kit it has turned out to be. All of those extra options. I will make sure to link to the actual uh, previews of this kit in the description. So as always, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as the patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including producers Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Fred, Trainboy, and Jimmy. Your support is invaluable, folks. As well, thank you very much to Anvil Industry for letting me get my hands on the files for this a little early. This was a lot of fun. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comments box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time and you all enjoy the rest of your day.